Well, hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations and we are going to play today with the new IOD Mold Invitation Only. So this particular mold is so, is so friggin' cute. Um, has got four busts um, and One's one's a bulldog, one's a cat, one's a wolf, one's a deer, moose, deer with antlers. It's still a deer, right? Elk? No, deer. I think it's just a, a antlered deer. Um, and they're all dressed and they're and they're just so cute. So what I wanted to do was I specifically looked for a pot. I thrifted this one, which is pretty cool looking. It's not gonna look the same anymore, but what I want to do is these guys fit on there. So I wanna do two and two. So I'm gonna do the dog and a cat on one side, and then I'll do the the deer and the, hard to tell, is it a wolf or a bear? Okay, the two wildlife ones <laughs> over here. We'll do the two domestic animals, and then we'll do the two wildlife ones. So for this, what I want to do, besides putting glasses on, is because there's a lot of detail in these, I am going to make sure I get my cornstarch in there. Just, uh, I want to make sure that I get every little bit of those molds out. And this just helps the clay to be able to release easier. You can see I'm way down at the bottom of that box of cornstarch, but that all works. The trickiest one, of course, being those, those antlers. Now, you could use resin when you're doing this, certainly. Um, because I'm going up onto a sloped and curved surface, I need to use the the clay, unless I was using a casting resin that I can remove when it's still soft, so it's still moldable. Um, but I'm just gonna take my air dry, air dry clay from IOD and there we go, and get this pushed into my molds. And that micro rim, that raised edged rim of IOD makes this really easy to be able to get nice crisp edges. So I'm just going to push this down into my mold. That's gonna be way more than I need it. And just use the micro rim to be able to cut off the excess. When it's time to remove them, I like to flip them upside down and just kind of peel this back. What I do take is I take my little paintbrush that I use to brush my cornstarch in and I use that to kind of gently help them to be able to release. I think that's a bear, now that I'm seeing the detail. If anybody has any other thoughts, you can let me know, but I think he's a bear. There we go. Alrighty. Now, what I want to do, let me make, sh make sure I kind of separate my two and two, is flip them over and I want to put, I just look for my little squeegee tool. Here we go. And I want to put glue on the back. Now you can use any glue of your choice. I am using wood glue because I have tons of it here in the shop and you're gonna be way more than I need. So let me flip over the cat, get the cat done at the same time here. And I just want to ensure that I have 
a good coverage of my glue and especially on those detailed edges. So meaning I want to take it out to all the little antlers and all the little ears. I want all of those to be able to stick down nice and evenly. If I don't have glue on those, then they have a tendency as they dry to kind of curl up, which means they're going to maybe raise away from the base that I'm attaching them to. And given that this is gonna be drying overnight here in the shop, and I'm not gonna be here <laughs> to be making little course corrections on it, I'm gonna want it to stay put. Because I am gluing this to both sides of my surface, which means I can't lay it flat to dry. I'm going to have to use some painter's tape to hold these in place so they don't slide down inadvertently. So all I want to do now is kind of eyeball where they go. I'll clean up that excess glue, but we're going to be painting these after. So I don't have too many worries about it. I'm going to get the cat on so I get the spacing. You have to come over here, buddy. There we go. So I've got them glued down and I'm just going to grab ooh, the very last wet wipe. <laughs> very last one. And I'm just going to clean up those edges. Now, because I'm going to be painting over, I'm not going to see all that glue anyway, but I do just want to have um, a fairly smooth surface so I'm not inadvertently adding in unnecessary texture around it. Okay, so we're going to straighten them out, get them where I want. These are so cute. I mean, come on, look at them. Maybe just squish them together a little bit more. They seem kind of far apart. Let's make them be better friends here. There we go. Now the next two I'll have to apply while this is standing up. So what I will do is take some of my, just some of my painter's tape and I'm just not squishing over top of the figure at all. I'm just squishing on either side of it. And all I'm looking to do is to hold that securely in place so that when I stand it upright, it's not going to slide down my piece because of the glue. So that it can stand upright like this. And I'm going to attach these guys to this side very same way tape them up, let them dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come back and we will paint them up. And that's gonna be the exciting part. These have had overnight to dry and they look awesome. I wanna paint them in weathered wood to start. Mine was sludge. So I've added some water and uh, just stirring it back up. So it might be a little bit watery, but that'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. Um, let me just grab a little paintbrush. Here's this one will do. And I'm going to get this entire thing. So you can see this a little watery. Um, but I'm going to get the entire thing painted out in the weathered wood to start. We are going to be layering colors. So it's really not going to matter that this is kind of watery. Um, but it's providing us with a base to get going with. Our 
pot head overnight to be able to dry. Um, not because it needed overnight, but just because it was the end of the day. I, I went home. <laughs> um, what I want to do now is I want to build up layers on this. Um, and for this, you can be using any paint. I mean, I started with a DIY paint, which is clay-based. It's unsealed. Um, but the next color I wanted was kind of like a deep, rich green. And I had Bayberry by Fusion, which does seal. It doesn't matter. Don't agonize about these things. It's like, um, I sell two different paint lines, three if you count the milk paint. And... Um, you know, I use whatever I've got. It's as simple as that. For something like this, mixing back and forth is not going to matter to the finished product. The only thing that you have to remember is that this base coat is unsealed. Ultimately, I'd be dry brushing a bunch of layers on top. It means that there's still going to be segments of this that we see, which means whatever I do at the end, I still need to seal this, however I choose. All of these other layers, I want to do dry brushing. So first of all, look at this ratty chip brush. Oh, I love this, this is perfect. So I'm dipping in a little bit of paint. I'm going to wipe a lot of it off and I'm just gonna be adding on color using that dry brush. I'll go back in, get a little bit more when I need but I'm just gonna be adding these layers doing this and building up color. I don't want it to be green. I don't want it to be weathered wood. I don't want any of the others, but you can see that I'm going kind of into some of the darker tones first. I'll build up to light. And ultimately I will be adding a little bit of metallic in there too probably copper, which would be the copper patina from DIY, which does self seal. But you can see I'm adding that green. You can see that you can still see that weathered wood. This is just weathered wood. This is with the green. You can still see that weathered wood. And it ultimately, if you don't finish seeing, oh, there's weathered wood on there, it will have an impact on kind of echoing up through all these other colors that we're gonna layer on there. So I'm gonna finish with this. It will need five minutes to dry. I mean, this is probably dry enough. I could go already because I'm doing such light coats. So as much as this might seem like there's a lot of steps in terms of coats, it goes really fast. For this next layer, I just want to use like a mid-tone gray. And for this, I'm using Soapstone by Fusion. I'm using the same old ratty brush. I'm just holding it here and uh, it's going to still continue to do its job. And I'm just going to be doing exactly the same thing. For this, I'm probably going to use, you know, a quicker coat. You can see how it starts to create a bit of a, almost a stone finish here. But we're just gonna add this one on. And we're just continuing to do this, adding texture. Okay, next color, I'm going with Newell, also by Fusion. I have a ton of Fusion open right now. So this is kind of a soft, kind of taupey gray green. So definitely the lightest that we've used so far. You can see it's starting to pull out some of the details of things, but we're just gonna layer this very quickly over the top. And again, by the time that I get around, this coat is probably almost dry. For this coat, we're going even, uh, not that one yet. I'm gonna go linen. I'm gonna do the taupey one. So here's the deal. I'm gonna do the same thing, dry brushing. I'm gonna go um, linen in this kind of taupey color from Fusion. Then I'm gonna go pebble, which is the light gray. Let them dry and then we'll reconvene because then I need to add some metallics and uh, you know do some other stuff. So you know the drill. We're just, we're just dipping, dry brushing, 
adding a bit of color. This is where we're at so far. Still more steps to go. None of these steps is major or difficult or hard or challenging. Um, so don't sweat the fact that there's a number of them. It's just what is. Um, I am taking a slightly darker green. This is Fancy Farm Girl from DIY um, in this green, which is a little bit like an, I'm using a small fan brush for this. I am still gonna be dry brushing, but I just want, I don't want it all over. So I'm just looking for this to kind of go around and accent in a couple of spots. Think of it sort of like, you know, this is an old pot and we've got a little bit of moss starting to grow on it. And so we're just kind of touching it lightly in some of those spots that just kind of help age and weather it. Can you see some of that green there? That's it. So it's not even an all over dry brushing that we're doing. We're just doing it here and there. And on these, I'm just kind of doing more in around the creases of it rather than over the top. So it's kind of just balancing that out a little bit. It kind of highlights them a bit, adds a little bit more depth to it. We're gonna do a little bit more on that as well. Um, so you know, just because another step, why not? And again, this isn't huge. It's not a lot and it doesn't take long to do. Okay, that's it for that. Now, <laughs> next piece. I wanna add some of that metallic and I wanna do it now while I still have a chance to kind of tone it down a little bit. I'm gonna be using copper, which is pennies from heaven, which is the copper patina from DIY, which is um, a beautiful copper. And what I love about it, okay, time to, time to replace that is is it's a little bit translucent so it's not like a copper paint and i'm using that same kind of fan brush so that i can kind of just dry brush over strategically predominantly i want to do it um on our figures our figures a little bit on the handles so this is going to highlight some of those details but i don't want it super heavy so you can see him versus him so i am going to do each of the figures again just kind of dry brushing over those details and a little bit of the handles and maybe some of the rim i'm, I'm saving saving the rim until i actually get this on elsewhere and then I'll decide. But it's not an all over thing. Last step is I wanna take some clear wax because again, I wanna make sure that all of those paints underneath, in particular that weathered wood from DIY and that green that we just added are sealed. You can see that it kind of makes those colors pop even more. So I want to get everything coated in the clear wax. And then I want to take some dark wax. Dark wax is the brown wax. So I've got a little bit, just very little on here. And I am going to use that as a bit of shading here and there. Mostly down in the crevices and around the edges. So you can see this one versus this one. And if I get it a little heavier, then I want, I'll just take that same brush that I had the clear wax on and I'll use that to help move it around. But we're using that dark wax to kind of 
age our piece a little bit and add just a little bit more definition to our figures. Let's take a look at our finished piece. So this is our new container. Looks nice and old and aged. These guys are just such awesome little molds. They are so cute and just, you know, add another little element onto there. Now we did them so that they stand out but blend in. That they're not, um, they're not just kind of, I mean, they're hard to miss, but they're not so in your face. We've got them highlighted a little bit with just the copper on them, just on them, and then on the handles. And we've got a lot of the rest of the texture coming through and just sort of highlighting some of the details on this. This is a super easy technique. I get that there's a lot of little steps, but understand that because we're dry brushing those colors on, it is drying almost immediately. So the only real wait time is the base coat, right? We've got the wait time for the molt, and then we've got the wait time for the base coat. After that, it just flies by and you're able to just complete it all at once. Um, the difference with these is I wanted to show you kind of a different way of being able to finish them off. I've seen a lot of paint everything black and just highlight them in gold. And I wanted you to see that they're um, much more versatile than that in the sense that they don't have to be totally um, bold and in your face to be able to add um, some elements of detail. And they've got kind of a bit of that old world look to them already in terms of the design and up on pedestals and just add kind of a super cute little dimension to this. As always, let me know what you guys think. Um, and let me know if this was helpful to you, even in terms of the layering of the color and the finish. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care. <laughs>